Will the congregation please rise? I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will raise me up upon the earth. After my awakening, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see in my eyes behold him, who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord, so it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. We welcome you to Christ Episcopal Church. This is the church, the body of Christ, that, uh, that is Janet Francis' church. And we come here to, uh, to give thanks to the Lord God who made her, and the Lord God uh, is where she rests, and so we give thanks for that. Our opening hymn is hymn 179, uh, verses 1, and then 4 through 5. You'll find it right in front of you in the uh, hymnal. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that your servant Janet, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. 
Amen. And most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with Janet's family and friends and their grief. Surround them with your love that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture, please. Please join me in reading the 23rd Psalm. It's in your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the book of Romans. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. You would stand with me. Our hymn is hymn 439, What Wondrous Love Is This?
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. This is the gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Because it's going to be a long sermon. (laughs) I love that song. What wondrous love is this? What wondrous love is this? And I think it's appropriate for Janet. What wondrous love is this? For me, Janet was just a no-nonsense person, right? a no-nonsense person. Now, Sydney, from hearing stories, not quite like that, right? But the wondrous love of Janet, Karen and I, I've known a little bit about Janet uh, a while back, but uh, recently, in the last year, year and a half, uh, she had been going through her illness, and Karen, who runs all our pastoral care hospital and hospices and everything, we had been making plans with Janet about uh, visitations and worship and bringing communion to her and things like that. But she told us, I, I want to come to church. I, I, I want to come. This is my church. But I also don't want to sit in a big crowd because of, of, of the condition she was in. And so we made arrangements and had communion in our veterans chapel, which is really small, and, and had communion with her. And it was a, a wonderful, wonderful time, and she talked about uh, her faith, and she talked about Sydney, and it just brought about this wondrous love. But then I really got to see it in person, because a couple times she drove Sydney here in, in his little chair and everything, and it's not easy. It's not easy. I, I did that for my mom and dad, and, you know, I'm still fairly young. It's not easy putting things like that together and helping somebody in a car and, and bringing them for what some people would say, why? Why would you just do that? Have them come to you, or why would you even do something like come to worship? But what wondrous love is that to bring him here? And, and push him and move him and move the car and find ways to go up the handicap ramp and to have communion with your husband, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. It's not a little snack or a little appetizer. It shows that this is a form of praise and worship to the one who has power over life and death the one whose scars share and say, death has no victory over me, for I am the very God who created you. When Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, he's not thinking about some 4-H or FFA kind of member, right? I grew up in the Rio Grande Valley. I had a lot of friends in FFA and and, uh, 4-H and raised lambs and pigs. He's not thinking about that at all. He is alluding to, the Old Testament, one that was just read, Psalm 23, right? 
It's not a little nice little t-shirt you wear or put it on a coffee cup. The Lord is my shepherd and all that kind of stuff. It is God saying, I am the shepherd. There is no other shepherd around. I am the shepherd. He will say in Ezekiel, to all those who wear these fancy clothes and fancy little garments, you are called to be my priest. You are called to lead my people Israel into whole, into wholeness, into joy, and you did not. You scammed them. You took away everything from them. You treated them like beggars. You priests, you shepherds of Israel, and you will stand in judgment. And I, I, the Lord God, will be your shepherd, and I will lead Israel. That doesn't sound that pithy, does it? It sounds like God is making a statement. That God is saying, I am king, and you are not. I am Lord, and you are not. I am the shepherd. And when Jesus says this, this itinerant rabbi healing people and talking to people and bringing them hope, he says, I'm the good shepherd. It is shocking. It is shocking because he is saying he's the one from the Old Testament. Either he's a lunatic, he's a liar, or he really is the Lord God who has come. There's really no other way around it. For Janet and for Sydney, they understood he's the Lord, the shepherd that will call his people to himself and will bring upon his people wholeness and fullness and everlasting life. Not through a sword, not through bombs or a tank or anything like that, but through bringing about all of wickedness and evil upon him and bear it on the cross and to provide forgiveness and love and hope in a whole way that the world does not understand. God will do that. What wondrous love is this? Janet knew. She knew fully well, and she is fully alive in the arms of the Good Shepherd. Amen. Now, will you stand with me as we will say the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And if you would join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For our sister Janet, let us pray to our Lord Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Janet and dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrows. You raise the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. 
You promised paradise to the thief who'd repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister was washed in the baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. <clears throat> she was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister Janet. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister in Christ, Janet, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. I do want to uh, uh, say that right after the service, we will have uh, a little reception in the parish hall. We, we're going to uh, bring the family in as we sing some of the final hymns. And if you would join us, wonderful cookies. I've tasted uh, pretty much all of them. They're really good and great sandwiches. So please join us. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, for sorrow and pain are no more, neither a sign but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, for sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. And into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Janet. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Now may the peace, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is Love Divine. <laughs>
Alleluia, 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 Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And now let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.